Hello, everyone. My name is Danny Nguyen. I'm Amelia Landsberg. And I'm Sophie Schaumann. This past summer, we studied the microplastic presence within waterfowl of the Prairie Pothole region through ERSCA at Concordia College. Plastic usage and improper disposal is a growing ecological problem for marine and freshwater ecosystems. Especially, there are a large number of microplastics in the environment, which are plastic particles less than five millimeters in size. These plastic particles have been documented, especially in marine environments, but not so much freshwater, and specifically the prairie pothole region of North Dakota. In this study, we looked at three different feeding habits of waterfowl in this region. Dabblers, which graze food on the surface, divers, which feed beneath the water surface, and ground foragers, which consume both terrestrial and aquatic food sources. In this research, we aim to analyze the relationship between these types of feeding habits. We analyze the distribution of microplastics in the different organs of the gastrointestinal tracts, and we characterize the microplastics according to color, type, and measurement. Okay, so our samples were donated to us by um, hunters who shot the birds in the Devil's Lake region of, of North Dakota. Um, and we removed and separated the proventriculus, gizzard, and intestine from the birds to understand the distribution of the microplastics within the gastrointestinal tract. Um, so for our methods, we bisected each organ and rinsed the contents under the cold tap water above a sieve. And then the sieve contents were then transferred into a beaker and ran through filter paper using a vacuum apparatus and a Buchner funnel. The filter papers carrying the digestive contents were then put into a glass petri dishes and left to completely dry in a fume hood overnight. The following day, we would analyze the samples under a dissecting microscope with repetitions of right to left and up and down in order to thoroughly inspect our samples. Um, when we were um, looking at the samples, we tried to identify the microplastics and characterize them accordingly. Um, so to do this, we followed a few different criteria, including, okay, so there were no observ observable organic or cellular structures present in the microplastic. The fibers should have consisted consistent with, with throughout the entire length. Um, and then the colored particles should be homogenous and appear artificial. And then any debris that has a clear or whitish color would be inspected further under a higher magnification to confirm that it was a microplastic. So over the course of summer, um, I crossed 112 dissected gua um, guadafowl sample. We identified 460 microplastics particles in which 69 of 69 percent of those uh, identified in doublers gastrointestinal um, tracts, um, as in Figure Two, um, you can see our ANOVA test show a significant higher average number of microplastics in ground foragers um, than in doublers, confirming our hypothesis of feeding habit types can have an effect on the number of microplastics present within the subset of doublers. On figure three, um, we found a statistically higher amount of microplastic in the intestine, Why in graph forager, figure number four, a significant higher of microplastic is determined in their proventriculus. This gave us direction to further study about the location where microplastic was consumed. Further characterize or, my, or identify microplastics, we noticed 99% of our microplastic to be fibrous, which has low, low density that directly impacts the dabblers. In the future, we would aim to assess the abundance of microplastics in the gastrointestinal tracts of diving ducks to have a better understand of that type of feeding habit and the number of microplastics they consume. We'd also aim to understand the prevalence of microplastics in the overarching environment by analyzing invertebrate, soil, and water samples from the prairie, prairie pothole region across the region.